Tri nachi ketas, tri birechya sandhim, tri karma kritarati janmam rityu. Brahma jagyam deva mityam vivitva, nichaye mam shanti matyantameti. One who, getting connection with the three, piles up the Nachiketa fire thrice, and undertake three kinds of work, crosses over death. Getting knowledge of that omniscient one who is born of Brahma, and realizing him, he attains this peace fully. And now Shankaracharya's Tika. Sandhimetya, getting connection, Turibihi, with the three, with mother, father, and teacher, that is, getting his instruction from mother, etc., properly, for that is known as a source of valid knowledge from another Vedic text. As one who has a mother, father, and teacher should say, etc., Briharanyaka Upanishad. Or, Tribihi may mean through the Vedas, the Smritis, and the good people, or through direct perception, inference, and the scriptures, for it is a matter of experience that clarity follows from them. Trinachiketaha, one who has piled up the Nachiketa fire thrice, or one is or one who is possessed of its knowledge studies it and performs it, and trikarmakrit, one who undertakes trikarmakrit, one who undertakes three kinds of karma, sacrifice, study of the Vedas, and charity. Tarati crosses over, janmamrityu, birth and death. Moreover, viditva, Knowing from scriptures, Brahma Jagnyam, one that is born from Brahma, that is, Hiranyagarbha, is Brahmaja, Virat, and one who is Brahmaja and Gnya, illumined, is Brahma Jagnyam, for he, that is, Virat, is omniscient. Knowing that Devam, deity, who is so called because of his effulgence, which is the derivative meaning of virat, that is, one who is possessed of such attributes as knowledge, and who is idyam, praiseworthy, adorable, and nichaya, looking, meditating on that virat as one's own self. One A.T. gets imam, this palpable, that is, patent to one's understanding, shantim, peace, cessation from objects, atyantam, thoroughly. The idea is that through a combination of meditation and rites, he attains the state of virat. Now he concludes the results of the knowledge about the fire and of its piling up as also the topic under discussion. Trinachiketas trayame tadviditva ya evang vidvang shinute nachiketam samrityupashan purata pranodya shokati go modute svargaloke one who performs the Nachiketa sacrifice thrice after having known these three factors, and he who, having known thus, accomplishes the Nachiketa sacrifice, casts off the snares of death even earlier, and, crossing over sorrow, rejoices in heaven. Viditva, after knowing, etatrayam, these three described earlier, the kind and number of bricks as also the manner of arranging the fire, in verse 15. 
He who becomes Tri Nachiketaha, a performer of the Nachiketa sacrifice thrice, and Yaha, who, Evan Vidvan, having known the fire, Virat, thus, as identified with oneself, Chinute accomplishes Nachiketam, the Nachiketa fire, performs the sacrifice called Nachiketa, Saha, he, Pranodya, casting off, Mrityupashan, the snares of death, consisting in vice, ignorance, desire, hatred, etc. Purataha, even earlier, that is, before death. Shokadigaha, crossing over sorrow, that is, mental discomfort. Modate, rejoices, Svargaloke, in heaven, in the world of Virat, by becoming identified with him. Namaste. Well, this is deep. And it's a mystery. Because in the purport, in the tika, to the first verse, even Shankaracharya sounds a little bit confused. Like he's not quite sure what is meant by the three. Now, we have made a long study since like 2002 of the science of ontology. And in, in ontology, it takes a three, a triple, to create a thing that has being. We know this. This is a settled conclusion of ontology going back thousands of years, even to the Vedic time. And we see here all kinds of evidence of ontology, because what he's talking about is the principle of the triple. And then he suggests three interpretations for this triple. It could be the mother, father, and guru. It could be the learning, the practice, and the realization. It can be the three different kinds of work, study, sacrifice, and charity, and so on. So what we're dealing with here is actually a triple of triples, a triple structure of three. And then he says in the next verse that one who performs the Nachiketa sacrifice three times is going to realize virat. Now, this whole thing pivots on the definition of virat. And we'll get to that in a minute because it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, but first I want to visit this concept of the triple of triples. When I read this, I said, wow, this is a mystery. This is very deep. And then I remembered, actually, I have come across this same type of structure in the Gayatri Mantra. And I went back to our original video, which you should take a look at, about the triple structure of Gayatri. And now Gayatri is a prayer to the Divine Mother to give spiritual wisdom to all humanity. This is significant, and we'll come back to this in the definition of Virat. Now, Virat, let's see, I made some notes from the Sanskrit dictionary. Virat means a person who is viraj. The root is viraj, to reign, rule, govern, master, excel, and also to be illustrious or eminent, to shine forth, to shine out, to glitter or appear. Now, the origin of Virat, he's also called Hiranyagarbha or Vaishvanara. Uh, different schools use different terminology, but it's the same concept. The Virat Rupa is discussed in Bhagavad Gita as something fearful because it's very much aligned with death. 
death of the physical body, okay? But as we discussed in the last video, death of the physical body is actually a kind of liberation. It frees us from the things we're identified with, from the things that we crave, uh, material desires, and so on. So it's actually a benediction. It's actually a blessing. Otherwise, we would continue in material existence indefinitely, and there would be no release. So the history of Virat is that he is the original... Well, let me read directly what it says. Brahma, having divided his own substance into male and female, produced from the female the male power, Viraj, who then produced the first Manu, Svayambhuva, who then created the ten Prajapatis. In other words, back in the beginning of the universe, Brahma was there all alone. And, of course, Vishnu is there, but he's on a higher platform. And Shiva is there, but he's very much in the background. So it's up to Brahma to populate the universe. How did he do it? He gave birth or created somehow or other, it's not really discussed in scriptures. This cosmic egg, Hiranyagarbha, means the golden egg. And this is identified with Virat. So the Virat Rupa is actually the original form of all the living beings of the universe. So this was produced by Brahma, and it's also called Vaishvanara, the name of the supreme spirit or intellect when located in a supposed collective aggregate of gross bodies. That's an awkward definition, but what it really means is the sum total of all living beings. So, <laughs> let's go back again and look at the um, definition of the Nachiketa sacrifice. It uses 720 bricks. 720 is the total of the days and nights in the Vedic astrological year. 360 days, 360 nights. So, this is the solar year. This is the time that it takes the sun to go from north to south and back again. One complete solar cycle. One complete orbit of the earth around the sun, however you want to look at it. It means that if one performs the Nachiketa sacrifice thrice, three times, it takes three years. And what is the essence of that sacrifice? To contemplate oneself as identical with Virat. And because Virat is identical with all the living beings in the universe, this means, and, and he shines. Huh? He's effulgent, he rules. Now, when I read all of this, and I'm trying to digest it, I said, well, what does this mean? What is the actual experience of Virat? And since it's not really given here in the text, I meditated on it, and I prayed to Virat, and I said, you please reveal yourself to me. So I meditated like that for some time. Then I went to bed. Last night was full moon night. Huh? I went to bed early, about 8 o'clock, and then I woke up around midnight. The moon was really bright. It's a super moon. So it was really extraordinarily bright and powerful. And, you know, you can feel at the time of full moon, the gravity of the moon pulling upward. You can really feel it, especially here in Sri Lanka, which is a gravitational anomaly where the force of gravity of the Earth is less than normal. So when you have a powerful moon like that, you can really feel it. Anyway, I woke up and I had this song going through my head, a song that I haven't thought of in, I don't know, decades. Huh? Uh, come on, people now, 
Smile on your brother, everybody get together, try to love one another right now. Huh? Good old Jesse Colin Young. He's a friend of mine when I used to live in the little artist's enclave, musician's enclave in uh, rural California, uh, where the Grateful Dead, and I lived in Janis Joplin's house, and, you know, everybody knew everybody else, everybody partied with everybody else. Uh, so what does this mean? What, why is this coming up in my intuition? Well, if Virat is the sum total of all living beings, the intelligence uh, of all living beings combined, then, and he is the son of Brahma, then to love him or to contemplate on him or to meditate on him is the same as to love all living beings in the universe. And this struck a chord, this rang a bell. Wait a minute, I've encountered this concept before. In the Buddha's teaching, it's called metta. Metta means broadcasting love and blessings to all living beings everywhere. And so I went into that meditation. And let me tell you, if you want to get ecstatic, <laughs> If you want to experience joy, huh? joy to the world, all the boys and girls, <laughs> joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea, joy to you and me. Ba -bang, ba -bang. <laughs> See, artists get these inspirations and they put them into poems and songs and pictures and stuff that they generate. And they don't really, you know, explicate them philosophically because as we see in these texts, it can get awfully messy. The symbology, the, the metaphor often obscures and overwhelms the simple experiential truth behind it. And one of the reasons I love the Buddha's teaching is that the Buddha liked to cut through all that and get to the experiential nature or essence of these high philosophical concepts. But what does it mean to love all living beings? See, you have to sit down and try it. If you do, especially on a night, you know, in the middle of the night, where everything is silent, you know, the moon is like really powerful, and you're sitting there thinking joy to the world. <laughs> it's a very powerful experience. So I can see, if you practice this every day for three years as a regulated daily meditation, yeah, you'd be in heaven, all right. <laughs> you'd be at peace. You would be feeling the supreme cosmic joy and that's the thing, you see, peace without joy is boring. Huh? It's just like heaven without love. What's the use of it? So the dry philosophy tends to cut things up and, and separate them into their component concepts, with, and they lose their relationship, they lose their experiential reality. And the purpose of the teaching of the self-realized being is to cut through all that and get to the actual personal experience behind it. So here, death is advising Nachiketa that you perform this sacrifice for three years running and you will attain that peace which passeth all understanding. Huh? Because, I mean, in that state of joy, all the material troubles just melt away and the whole material world actually becomes irrelevant and you become in joyful communion with the essence of the spirit of all living beings, which is Brahman. And this is the actual goal of self-realization. 
Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>